Now, do you believe that, from what you've heard, that vitamins are safe? You believe they're safe? <laughs> and uh, do you believe that vitamins can cause you harm? How many think vitamins can cause you harm? Okay. Now, now hypervitaminosis, probably most of you have heard of that, you know, where you're getting too many, as Delore says, whether it's, whether it's A, C, or E, and that's certainly a condition that can be very, very serious. But we're, talking, we're going to talk today about primarily the amounts that you get from routine taking of vitamins, that you, like you would go over to Walmart's and buy you a bottle off, and here's the, the recommended dosage. Now, have you heard of antioxidants? in the news any? Oh yeah. Okay. All right, and do you believe that these antioxidants that you've heard about on the news are good for you? Okay. Have you heard of free radicals? Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody has. I see some of my wife, some of Robin's um, ladies' magazines there, and boy, the free radicals. These antioxidants, they assure you that you're not going to have wrinkles, you're going to be, be beautiful and live a healthy life forever. That may not be the case. <laughs> and of these free radicals that you've heard about, in that context that you've heard of them, do you think that these free radicals are harmful or can hurt you? All right. Robin, would you pass out those little handouts we brought? You might have to share. We didn't know how many would be here, so we made 20 copies. But um, Okay, but we can share with neighbors, too, here and just see, because we're going to go over some of these facts here. There was a time when I felt, too, that, you know, these, particularly we're going to talk about the vitamins A, C, and E today. And when I thought these things were the greatest things around, and I'd have a little meal of vitamins every day to go along with my regular meal, until I really started getting into the subject of oxygen metabolism, what it does in our the impact of an antioxidant on us. Basically, we have one mechanism that helps keep us in a state of health, and that is this chemical process called oxidation. If we get an infection with a bacterium, our white blood cells go catch that little bacteria, it brings it inside itself, and then it kills the bacteria. How does it kill it? It doesn't have a little pistol or 38 revolver in there to shoot it with. It kills it oxidatively. Now, these things work all the time, 24 hours a day, every day. And this is very important. We have 10 times the number of microbes in and on the body than we have cells within the body. So why aren't we constantly infected? We're not. Because our body holds them in abeyance. And the best way to look at this is the system that we utilize to clot the blood and to break down or to prevent clotting. It's called a fibrinolytic system. If that system isn't working for us all the time, our body would, clot, would form clots in the veins. But it doesn't, because that system there to break it down is working 24 hours a day, every day. As I started doing research in these areas, I was astounded that many systems have to work 24 hours a day, every day. They have to work constantly. For instance, to hold off infections from all of these bacteria that we have all over us. The same thing they do with viruses. This is the same way that we fight viral infections, oxidatively. It's also the same way that we fight new cancer cell formation. If new cancer cells start to grow, our bodies can detect them. And then they tell the cancer cell through chemical signals they tell the cancer cell to commit suicide. It's called apoptotic execution. Big, long names, real complicated chemistry. But it suffice it to say that our body tells those little cancer cells to kill themselves. It does so oxidatively. The whole process of oxidation, which is changing some electrons around in certain compounds, is there to protect us. So a basic question then is, if oxidation is there to protect us 24 hours a day, why on God's green earth would I want to take an antioxidant? Something that should stop that. A theory came about in the early, in the mid-50s, really, in 54, 55, by a guy called Dr. Denham Harmon. Now, I know Dr. Harmon, have met him, have lectured at the same 
courses that he's been at. He came up with a theory then called the free radical theory in which he hypothesized that oxygen free radicals as they were metabol as oxygen was metabolized in the body as we get older these oxidative products build up in the body and those oxidative products are the things that cause various diseases including cancer heart disease atherosclerosis diabetes now the list is over a hundred different diseases are attributed to these oxygen products in the body well this was kind of easy to do and oxygen in my opinion and the products of it and some of those products are simple molecules such as hydrogen peroxide such as plain old bleach hypochlorous acid these are strong oxidizing agents but they're in us all the time these are some of the compounds that our body uses to kill these bacteria to kill these viruses any virus including the AIDS virus that has a lipid a fatty coat on it these things will oxidize and kill if we're in the laboratory and we spill we think we have HIV blood and we spill it on a laboratory countertop how do we clean that we say quick get some bleach we're gonna oxidize it get some peroxide we're gonna oxidize it many municipalities in Europe clean their entire water system with hydrogen peroxide or with bleach most of our pools are cleaned with forms of chloride bleach calcium chloride forming hypochlorous acid in the pool if we want to clean all of the effluent from this city and pump it into the swamp down there we clean it with oxidation ponds oxidatively the same way we kill and control bacteria outside the body is the same way chemically we do it inside the body and not even doctors are aware of this they haven't had a chance to study it but this is the basis of this whole approach on vitamins now I disagree with Dr. Harmon completely in his free radical theory in fact I believe oxygen is our greatest ally it is so incredibly important that within even a matter of seconds of deprivation being deprived of oxygen brain cells will start to die in a matter of seconds let alone the whole body can have irreversible damage in minutes without oxygen and although we don't realize it, it happens for us passively from the moment of our first breath or even being supplied through the mother's blood supply that oxygen's there without it we cease to exist so I usually tell those scientists or doctors in attendance that if they doubt the importance of oxygen just hold your breath for five minutes and then we'll talk about it I haven't had one take me up on that yet why it's supposed to be so bad it's supposed to be causing all these diseases no it isn't in fact it's the method that we use to keep these diseases away if we look at the situation of cardiovascular disease blockages in blood vessels when these plaques start to build up there's now experimental work that clearly shows we can take compounds that are photo activated they will be absorbed by that plaque if we shine the right kind of light 630 nanometer light through a laser on it you can dissolve that plaque we do the same thing with cancer cells and you do not kill normal cells it's selective the body knows how to handle these oxygen products it does so all the time when we try to treat cancer now with chemotherapy it's really choose your poison many of these are chemical cousins of mustard gas that's where they came from the army realized this in the late forties and such that these mustard gas products weapons of mass destruction would kill rapidly growing cells so what they did was in the, unfortunately for the first gentleman they tried it on he didn't make it it was too strong today we use maximally tolerated dose that's easy to figure out maximally tolerated dose if you give any more you kill the patient but we now know too that from the combinations of chemotherapy and irradiation that in the process of trying to kill the cancer cells we have killed the patient there's no selectivity to it many times chemotherapy and irradiation are just about as bad as a disease itself and unfortunately we've all had family members likely who have had this and we see the terrible times that they go through we've got to have better answers and I think that a lot of this research work that I'm doing now with this oxidative capacity of the body is going to lead to those better answers 
where we can selectively kill not only the cancer cell itself, but we can kill any metastatic lesions in the body if we raise the oxidative capacity of the body high enough. I will envision a time with heart disease where if we have a blockage, we can put a catheter in just proximal to that blockage infuse these simple compounds such as hydrogen peroxide and bleach, hypochlorous acid, which together form a magical compound called excited singlet oxygen. It will dissolve the plaque in situ. You could remove the catheter, no stent, no surgery, and go on your way. That's what we're headed for. But it's extremely difficult to get there. I'm sounding like one voice crying in the distance now. <laughs> Because everyone's been taught and has accepted that the free radicals are bad, the antioxidants are good.